Hey, good morning to you. Happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, we got the storm system coming to the upper Midwest. Plus, we have our tornado thread that is souped up from Monday into Tuesday and Tuesday into Wednesday, bringing a lot of flash flooding. And if you've never been here before, hello. My name is Mark. I do upload all year long. Make sure you listen to that special message that I have at the end of the video. It'll let you know for the future of what this channel is going to bring, as well as hit that subscribe button. Show us some support. Thank you for visiting my channel today. All the links are in the description to help save you time. Make sure you use them. Now for today, they do have mixed precipitation and all this blue and snow and all this white. But for tomorrow, things are going to start popping off. Not only the snow, but the mixed precipitation on the upper Midwest. All this freezing rain possible in the pink. Then the severe weather in the south. Then it's going to get even worse. Not only severe weather in the south moving over. Now you got a big area for flash flooding with more mixed precipitation, heavy snowfall, and more freezing rain possible. And the alerts for this morning is you have flood warning in all of this green, high wind warning in the brown. We have winter weather advisories in this blue and purple and winter storm warnings in this pink with some blizzard warnings still for North Dakota and Northern Minnesota. So for Montana, remember all these links are in the description for you so you can see your timing when this front is coming down with these cold temperatures. Now you will have some gusty winds for 30 to 40 miles per hour and lower elevations you will have 3 to 6 inches of snow. The mountain passes will have 6 to 12 inches of snow. Now North Dakota, National Weather Service has put this out for your most likely snowfall. All 7 to 10 inches in this orange with a very fine gradient going 6 to 9, 5 to 8, very quick 3 to 7 and one of three up here in the north. As well as South Dakota, they have widespread snow accumulations of two to five inches, but a band with five to 10 inches of snow accumulations near North Dakota border tonight and early Monday, with a second band coming four to six inches of snow, possibly across Southwest South Dakota, Monday night into Tuesday. But you do have the chance for blizzards all the way from 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday. And here's your timing for your cities of where your most significant blizzards will be. And most of it will be Sunday early morning all the way till noon, all the way to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Plus your tornado threat. Monday going into Tuesday, you have a 2% chance for tornadoes in this green and a 5% chance in all this brown. With the most impacts for Memphis, Tennessee, Little Rock, Arkansas, North Little Rock, Arkansas, Jonesboro, Arkansas, and Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Plus Tuesday and the Wednesday is when this storm is really going to strengthen and you have thunderstorms and all this green. But for your severe weather, you have 5% chance in all this brown and a 15% chance in all this yellow for Tuesday going into Wednesday. So your severe weather risk, this is your cities and your states with the most impacts being Memphis, Tennessee, Jackson, Mississippi, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Jackson, Tennessee, and Decatur, Alabama. And Tuesday going into Wednesday, the flash flooding gets bigger and heavier. You have marginal risk in all this green and a slight risk in all this yellow for flash flooding Tuesday into Wednesday. Plus the link in the description as well as you can see the severity of the impacts. But the probability for at least four inches of snow. Here's this from what National Weather Service. You have 70 to 90% chance in all this orange and 90 to 100 in all this red for at least four inches of snow. And the highest icing threat is right here by me and Michigan and all this pink. Even though you see all this purple, 7 out of 10 chance for a tornado, you're not going to get precipitation to come with all that energy until about 9 and 10 o'clock at night. And you can see that here, starting right at 9 p.m., you started getting some nasty little cells, and it goes all across Oklahoma all night long towards northern Arkansas, southern Missouri, and carries into southern Illinois as well. And right at 9 o'clock, Right here, your tornado perimeters are gets up to 5 out of 10 chance for tornadoes as all this unstable energy goes up towards Arkansas. You can see how it consolidates right into Oklahoma and southern Missouri. And when you look at your shear, you can see how you're getting storms all day long, but you really don't have this strong shear to ride around 7 o'clock for northern Texas. This cell travels all the way towards 9 o'clock. This is when you have your most cape. And this is when you start getting some bad cells passing through Texas, Oklahoma, and it goes all night long into Oklahoma, also into southern Missouri. Very strong cells. So you can see as your cape rises up from 6, 7, and 8 o'clock, you have this little pocket of over a thousand cape values, which is strong enough to support thunderstorms, and you have the shear. And that carries all night long into Oklahoma. And this is bringing a lot of chances for tornadoes. 
But you can see right here with your shearder, you get a nasty little cell that strengthens up from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. and goes across Oklahoma with some good shear values on these perimeters, guys. This is going to be some strong cells that's going to rip across Texas and across Oklahoma. Get another strong one at 1 a.m. Nasty little cell that's going to pass through Texas with some shear. Got a little bean to it, too. So I would say all night long for Texas and Oklahoma as it goes towards northern Arkansas. So first thing Monday, you're going to have these cells breaking up, especially for southern Arkansas, southern Mississippi. Got some shear values to them. You need to think about that as far as getting some chances for some bad thunderstorms, as well as a chance for a tornado or two, especially northern Mississippi. But as that dies down by northern Alabama, by the time you get to the afternoon, then it's going to be Texas, Oklahoma, northern Arkansas with the biggest chance for the severe weather threat for tornadoes. It will carry into southern Missouri, but it does not have the cape that you need to keep that strong once it leaves Arkansas. You see how most of the cape stays around Texas, Oklahoma, northern Arkansas, and a little bit of southeast Kansas as well in southwest Missouri. We do have some cells coming by all the way till Tuesday morning that you need to think about. And there is some shear in these cells that has that cape, that lift. So there is a chance for tornadoes all the way till Tuesday morning that you need to think about. Nasty low cells passing by from 4 a.m. and 5 o'clock in the morning. So there is a chance overnight as well for these tornadoes. And your dew points really fill the atmosphere really good. By the time you get into Monday afternoon, then you got some strong 60s coming all the way up to the edge of Oklahoma, southeast Kansas, and across Missouri as well. We can only see 60 hours with the NAM 3K, but you can see how these dew points carry all the way up to western Tennessee and all across the south. This is by Tuesday at noon. So you very much have all the dew points you have. You have a good bit of lift, but you have some good shear as well. So not only for directional shear, you have speed shear coming with this storm because it will be a lot of winds and it will be fast moving. But as you look at your helicity tracks, which is wind direction change with height, you can see that the bulk of these storms will not be super severe for tornadoes until that 9, 10 o'clock cell moves from Texas towards Oklahoma. Good chance for that to be a long-lived cell going all across Oklahoma and into southwestern Missouri and southern Missouri all the way to the early morning hours. So watch out for that cell that's going from 9 o'clock at night from Texas, 10 o'clock to midnight through Oklahoma, early morning hours for southern Missouri all the way to 4 o'clock. Just be aware that those strong cells I showed you with the shear does have a good chance to be a long-lived cell with wind direction, with height as it moves across. Good chance for a tornado. And you can even see for the deep south, you do have a chance for those cells to pop off with some shear, but the worst of it is going to be for Texas, Oklahoma, and southern Missouri. Now, as we look at National Weather Service for these snow totals, you can see how it starts building up Monday morning all the way to Monday afternoon for Montana and the Dakotas, Minnesota, northern Wisconsin and upper Michigan, as well as you get it for Wyoming and towards Colorado. This is all the way until Tuesday. And it shows it gets a little major, according to National Weather Service. And so far, the impacts are widespread one to five inches, but you've got a chances for eight inches to a foot across central Minnesota with over a foot, and northern Wisconsin with a chance for a foot as well in upper Michigan. And everybody below all this snow is going to be seeing freezing rain and sleet all this heavy precipitation all this heavy snowfall will be northern and a foot of snow will be all northern into canada also picking up that this is the hot spot for the freezing rain as well showing you'll get a glaze across iowa northern illinois southern wisconsin and michigan with the heaviest part being for southern wisconsin and northern michigan with a chance for a quarter inch of freezing rain now, National Weather Service showing that your, your wind gusts will be in the 40s as this passed by. The highest chance was being the high 40s, 50 over the lakes. But like last time, National Weather Service didn't see the high winds, and NAM 3K and GFS show that it'd be 50 to maybe 60 miles per hour wind gusts. And that's what the NAM is picking up now. As this storm's passing through, it will bring widespread 50 to 60 miles per hour wind gusts. Starting from Texas, Oklahoma, all the way to the Great Lakes. 50 miles per hour wind gusts with a chance for 60. Upper half the Ohio Valley, 50s. Lower half is the 40s as it goes to the northeast, hitting the intercoastal of the northeast with the 50 miles per hour wind gusts. Everybody else just in the 40s. And the NAM is picking up the freezing rain as well. Almost the same path, just not the same amounts. 
It's showing it won't be a quarter inch of freezing rain. It'll be about a tenth of an inch of freezing rain. And about the same on the sleep as well. Not showing a lot of heavy amounts. Just a glaze across Iowa, Wisconsin, and northern Michigan. So freezing rain, sleet, and then snow to the north. And when you look at an AM3K snowfall totals, it shows a lot less than what National Weather Service is showing. It's showing anywhere from 1 to 5 inches. And the heavy spot will be northeast South Dakota. Central Minnesota picking up by all the miles that you can see up to a foot. But as it goes to northern Wisconsin, it gets light glaze of snow almost. But National Weather Service is picking up from Tuesday morning that you will start getting all this heavy precipitation and you still have the chance for that flash flooding all the way by Wednesday morning. Anywhere from two to three inches with one plus inches in all this yellow. Mostly northern Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, northern Arkansas, and southeastern Missouri. Just be aware, heavy precipitation, storms are going to train in this direction for hours. And as the storm passes through, according to GFS, you can see the rainfall, the sleet, the freezing rain, and the snow. We still have that second chance for that other one that I've been speaking about around the 24th and 25th. And so far, it's looking like a good chance for freezing rain and sleet again while you get some more snow for the Ohio Valley. As this carries over into Friday, then goes up to the northeast, bringing mixed precipitation and snowfall as well. With the first storm coming to the upper half of the country, and the second one will be across the Ohio Valley. And the second one bringing one to five inches anywhere from southeast Kansas, right across the Ohio Valley, getting a good bit of snowfall anywhere from one to five inches with a slight grade of six plus on the southern half of these states, all the way to the northeast. Carrying over heavy snowfall to Pennsylvania, northern Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Boston Cove, Southern New Hampshire, Southern Vermont, across New York, not much for Maine though. And the GFS sees all this heavy rainfall from the first storm as well. Close to what National Weather Service has, a little bit less for Tennessee. But as that second storm comes through, then you get more precipitation on top of the precipitation that's already come down. And the hottest spots is mostly for Kentucky, Western Kentucky. And so far, that's the update on these snowfall totals. The second storm, I do believe it will change a little bit. I will keep you updated on that. Now, I want to update you a little bit on, I wanted to help out so many of you for helping out me through all these hard times. Now, there's been a lot of trolls on these gifts that I was giving out for these live streams that was going this week. And a lot of hateful, no offense, but little kids that just want destruction and violence. And I'm never about that. I'm never going to ooh and ah over these destructive things that are coming that's very dangerous and life-threatening to a lot of good people. Our purpose is to help our brothers and sisters. So what I'm going to do is stop all this trolling and all this hateful comments that I get from these young kids. And instead of the, the items, guys, I'm just going to put it to where I know it's going to do good. I'm going to take it all in. I'm not going to wait for my merch. I'm not finished with the drawings yet. I'm going to feed a lot of poor people that need this food, especially in these hard times right now. A lot of people are having problems getting food, and they need to stock up because soon it's going to be really dangerous. Now, I will record these, and I will show these on live stream. So if you want to be part of this or if you want to help out, help feed these families, remember, hit that join button on the bottom. I will add that $2,000 that we're going to do every month and just feed people. People need food. So if you want to be a part of that, join the community. Make sure you are a part of that. And if you want to help give to that part, make sure you join with a good support. I don't do Patreon yet, but there is ways to support others. This is going all towards feeding others. So being on that point, what I wanted to do today is tell you a little bit about Luke 14, verses 12 through 15. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, Call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, nor thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call thee poor, thee maimed, thee lame, thee blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Amen. And that's my main purpose. I always wanted to feed people. And it's just been so much back and forth with 
these gifts I wanted to give to all of you for helping me. So to make sure it's going to the right way, to the right people, we're going to feed people. Every month. Forever. So if you want to be part of that, make sure you join. God bless all of you. I hope you have a very blessed day today. Please prepare for these impacts if you are in them. And I pray that God guides me and my family as we go on this journey to go feed other families. And we will record it for you and show it to you. But I pray he brings us to the ones that he wants us to go to that needs it the most. There's always a way. Just believe in God. <laughs> all power all glory does go to Yahweh God of Jacob <laughs> our father and may we feed as many as we can <laughs> amen <laughs> hallelujah guys have a great day today happy Sunday